guys, this is HD. And this is Pain User. And we're back, man. This is going to be Loser's Bracket Round 3 of the IGN IPL. Once again, first game going to be up on our YouTube channels, youtube.com slash stratbunker, youtube.com slash HD Starcraft. rest of the games can be found on IGN.com slash IPL. And this is a $5,000 prize pool tournament. And with that, I'll let you take it away, Pain User. And I believe uh, some of you guys have a chance to win a Nintendo DS. I believe five of them no are way. being given away. Yeah, so check out uh, IGN.com slash IPL, and I believe there's a, there's a contest or some kind of giveaway for that. So anybody interested in that, be sure to check it out. And we have... I never got the CC on that, man. I wanted a chance <laughs> to win a free Nintendo DS. Yeah, sure, why not? I don't I've know. actually been trying to get on the new Pokemon Black and White. I'm a Pokemaniac. But anyways... Uh, back to StarCraft world. Six Jacks vibe, yeah. and uh, <laughs> we got Nova Style Life, so we're gonna have a little TVZ action on Zelnaga Caverns, and I think that's a great map for Style Life. I think this is a great matchup in general, and I love casting TVZ with you, Pain User, because we just, I mean, we see the players bash heads, and me and you can both put in our input because, respectively, I'm a Zerg player and you are a Terran player. And um, not only that, I think it's one of the more entertaining matchups in oh, general. By far, I mean, uh, all bias aside, I honestly feel like Terran versus Zerk is the epitome of StarCraft. I mean, it's it's Starship Troopers, man. I actually Literally. I actually enjoy. <laughs> I actually <laughs> got Rico's Roughnecks Marines running we just, around. On we the just map. need Terrans. We just need an infantry unit that can launch nuclear missiles. Oh wait, we already have the Ghost. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> if only they had the the tactical nukes like in uh, Starship Troopers, you could just. Just launch them on the fly. The nuke. Yeah, yeah, the pocket nuke. Just exactly. shot, shoot it right into the little cave where the Zerg is, right in the Nidus room, and just blows all the units out. <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway, that would be awesome. And uh, hey, if Blizzard's listening for the next expansion, absolutely. And I think this is this map yields for uh, great TVZs in general because um, it's very easy for the Terran to take his third and yeah, yeah. once he gets into the the mid late game he can he can really start uh walling off different segments of the map Absolutely. but it's very difficult for the terran to hold his natural so it's very difficult to hold your natural early on but once you get into that macro mode and you have enough tanks to start uh creeping down towards the gold yeah. and eventually take that gold you can safely take the third but uh, there's a lot of options open to Zerg players for uh, early aggression on your natural. Yeah, this uh, Terran versus Zerg, it kind of plays in stages. The early stage, really favoring the Zerg player by taking out this natural. But the third, the third, the second stage, especially on this map, once you grab this gold area with a planetary fortress, it becomes extremely difficult for the Zerg player to stop that. And um, that's when the Terran player is at his mightiest. That's when he's got triple. Uh, triple income from three different spots. He has the best location right here because his PF kind of reaches all around. He can tank all, all the way over to the Zerg's gold mm -hmm. and do some serious damage. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, it's really brutal for the for the Zerg. It's just a very key point on the map, and yeah. it it really yields itself to the planetary fortress. Right. Um, to two different avenues going through the mid right there. It's near both the Zelnaga towers. I yeah. mean, it's just a, such an important area on the map. Um, Right now we have uh, Vibe getting out two early lings, oh, and it looks starport like... Starport going down here, Pain User. Star Life going for a Starport immediately, and it looks like we're going to see some kind of a Marine, Marine Hellion, Hellion drop. Medivac. Yeah. But uh, I don't see this killing Vibe. Vibe is very good at dealing with this kind of early game stuff, and one thing that I hope Vibe does is I hope he sacrifices an Overlord and sees this coming, but it doesn't look like he, he doesn't has have an Overlord any in, in position. Not to mention the Starport's all the way tucked inside the main. Yeah, it's, the Starport is in a good position, but I, I still think Vibe should have an Overlord at least uh, outside of the main right now. Now is the prime time to be sacrificing an Overlord and figuring out what's going on. Uh, Vibe not getting speed yet, so mm. this is going to be very difficult for him to deal with. I wonder if he's going to go with roaches or if he's going to go with uh, lings without speed or wow. just rely on the queens, but he really has nothing to deal with this push. Yeah, look at this, man. He's going uber greedy. He's getting the auxiliary hatch extremely early, and this is going to provide him a huge boon in the mid to late game. But right now, he needs Zerglings, and he needs it fast. He's making 10 right now. But like you said, Pinions are no speed whatsoever. Yeah, and this oh, is wow. going to make this rush from Stall Life so much more powerful. He right. didn't commit to the early Roach Warren. He didn't oh. commit to speed, and it looks like he's going to follow get it up with a Banshee. So this is going to be a devastating push coming from Stall Life. I think he's going to be able to do quite a bit of damage. It looks like he's... 
burying the Marines. I'm not sure to which location. Just going to drop <laughs> them outside of the natural and then probably do a push with all of his units together. Not yeah. sure why he's sending those Hellions back. Just taking care of a single Zergling, and it looks like he's going to try and push here. And Vibe has a bunch of speedless Lings and a couple yeah. Queens. I don't think he's going to be able to deal with this. This push is going to do a ton of damage. First Queen going down, bunch of Lings going down, and I don't know what he's going to do to stop this. Yeah, Stall F right now is just wrecking havoc inside the Zerg natural expansion. More Zerglings popping up, but they instantly roasted. Nice play right there by Vibe. Picking off the dropship, so now these Marines and, and Hellions have to retreat by ground, but really, they're so bulky in number, I don't know if it even matters, man. He's killed off tons of units, and Vibe right now could just lose this game. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure he just lost this game. And following it up with a cloaked Banshee, I don't think Vibe is anywhere close to his lair. Yeah. He, do he does have the Evolution Chamber, but I don't think he knows that it's coming. He's not going to have any Spork or crawlers in position uh, and once that banshee comes in I'm pretty sure that's just gonna seal the deal. Alright if we pull up this income tab though it looks like Vibe was able to save the majority of his drones retreating over into the main but these zerglings man I, I would really like to see him bulk up a large number of zerglings and then send them in along with his queens to take out this army sending them in one at a time like this like this man he needs to retreat as soon as his zerglings come out uh, I don't know he may have enough to deal with this but there's still a cloaked banshee. Stalife was able to get in such a good position using the minerals as a screen, yeah. tucking his marines and his hellions in between those minerals and just able to kill so many units that were reinforcing it. Now this cloaked banshee, gonna unanswered, nothing he can do about this. This is a terrible situation for Vibe and I think he's going to have to GP here. Well, here comes the Spore Crawler. So he's going to get a couple inside his main, but he is certainly very far behind right now. Thankfully, he has this auxiliary hatch, so he can kind of distance mine just a little bit from the natural minerals to that auxiliary hatchery. Banshee following the drones Watch here. Watch the drone count. Yeah, we're, if we pull this up, it is starting to diminish. It is now 20. Under 30 pain yeah, user. Now that he has the double banshees, he's also going to be able to kill queens that pop out, and he's definitely going to get this second hatchery at the natural. So, vibe just falling further and further behind here. Stall life really rocking the one base yeah and bringing it back from out of style <laughs> just doing a ton of damage this here is the 1980s man he's bringing it back i don't know how but yeah i mean this... i mean he does have another command center he just hasn't lifted it yet. yeah he, he doesn't need to yeah he really doesn't he just needs to play it safe get siege mode uh and eventually launch a secondary push um i trying his best here you gotta hand it to him he is really trying Really going after these Hellions, going to be able to pick off these last remaining Hellions and Marines, but the damage has been done. The natural is going to be completely erased. Both hatcheries yeah. going to be completely erased. Sport Crawler comes in at the last moment and says, Let me burrow, guys! I can save you, hatchery! <laughs> and it looks like Stall Life getting a Raven. Not sure what that's for. Maybe we're going to see some Hunter Seeker action. I remember oh, wow. he used that earlier on in the tournament. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in a game that he was also way ahead, but he did manage to bring out the. Uh, Hunter Seeker or the Seeker Missile, and maybe he's going to do that again. I'm not sure. Maybe he's using the Raven to detect creep tumors. It's always a nice unit to have just for its uh, utility. Absolutely. It's also good to deal with mutas. In fact, we do have Spire coming up right here. So Vibe is trying to get Spire out now. I, I, I like that, but it is so far away from being finished, and I, I, I'm pretty sure this lair is going to go down before the Spire gets up, which means that Vibe is going to have absolutely no income. I'm trying to find the Spire right now, in fact. I don't know where it is. And there we go. We have a GG called by Vibe and a pretty one-sided game right there by Stall Life and Vibe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Vibe was just playing way too greedy. Period. Getting a third hatchery. I mean, when you Before see... Before speed. When you, yeah, when you see Hellions and Marines coming at you... Yeah, he was scouting the Hellions yeah, and the Marines the whole time. He had Lings. I mean... I, was I the, my response would have been spine crawlers, speed speed and zerglings. Absolutely. Maybe even canceling the hatchery and throwing spine crawlers. I don't know if you need that third hatchery that early on in the game. I don't think you do either. And um, yeah, I mean, he knew it was coming. He knew some sort of rush was coming. I I don't think that he could have predicted the banshees without sacrificing an overlord, which he also should have done. Right. So uh, yeah, just a lack of scouting on Vibe's part and. A really nice proper reaction. But a really nice attack by Stall Life, going with Marine, Hellion, and then following up with Banshees. It forces the Zerg to get all these ground units, and very, you have nothing to hit there. Yeah, it's very simple, but well executed. Oftentimes... The best things are simple. Yeah, so. oftentimes that won't work out if, if the Zerg player knows it's coming and knows how to respond to it, but uh, he caught him off guard, yeah. and he took a quick win.
Nice play right there. And once again, this is the loser's bracket round three of the IPL. Next games can be found on IGN.com slash IPL. If you guys enjoy these broadcasts, make sure to tell your friends. Shout it out on the IGN website. Pain user and HD StarCraft. And we're going to have game two coming up next. Indeed. Indeed.